You might think that you know where all the Frank Lloyd Wright properties are located, but did you hear that Wright's original San Francisco office is now on exhibit in Erie, Pennsylvania? Welcome to the Hagen History Center and the reconstructed Frank Lloyd Wright and Green San Francisco office. This office has been on quite a journey coming from San Francisco through several other locations and now to its permanent home, new home here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Who better to tell you about this office than Jan Novi? Jan worked with Aaron Green in this office for over 20 years. Jan was Aaron's protege, just as Aaron Green was Wright's protege. Jan vi recently visited us in September, and he previously had participated with our local architect, Jeff Kidder, and our patron, Tom Hagen, in the ideas for the reconstruction of the office. Let's join Jan and learn more about this office. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here in the uh, San Francisco office of Frank Lloyd Wright and uh, Aaron Green. It's been, gosh, uh, probably close to 40 years that I've set foot in this office. I'd, I'd actually had a, a, a transcendental experience where I, I truly felt as if I was right back here in time in San Francisco, ready to, to, to step outside right into San Francisco. It, it's a thrilling thing, and I hope that everyone that comes here enjoys themselves. It's the best of right. It embodies everything he knew about in terms of organic architecture. All of the principles are here in this one space. So how did a second floor office that was inside a four-story building at 319 Grant Avenue get from California to Erie, PA? Let's start with how Wright and Green chose a San Francisco field office and why. It all started when Stanley and Mildred Rosenbaum of Green's hometown of Florence, Alabama asked Green in the late 1930s to design a house for them but Green persuaded the Rosenbaums to hire Frank Lloyd Wright, his favorite architect. While Wright was in his 70s at the time, he was enjoying a new peak in popularity brought on by the 1939 completion of Falling Water in Bear Run, Pennsylvania for Lillian and Edgar Kaufman, the owner of Kaufman's department store, and Johnson Wax headquarters constructed in Racine, Wisconsin between 1936 and 1939. Wright designed the Rosenbaum's home and later became friends with and consulted with Green, who joined Taliesin, Wisconsin, and Taliesin West, Arizona. The pair decided to open an office in San Francisco. It began with a simple sketch from Green, using strategies and motifs common to Wright's architecture of the 1950s. Wright reconfigured the design, and Green constructed the space with the help of a visiting Taliesin apprentice in 1951. The windows in this commercial building offered the kind of natural light that Wright's many designs used. The office windows looked out on the downtown with a building directly across the street. Inside the space, Angled geometries, internotched redwood plywood, a native Californian building material, partial walls and ceilings, incorporation of natural light, and varying ceiling heights speak to Wright's ideals. Green participated in dozens of Wright's projects and took over completion of the county civic center after Wright's death in 1959. Green continued to use the space for his own office through 1988. At that time, it was disassembled and sold to collector Tom Monahan of Domino's. From 1992 to 2004, the office was housed in the Heinz Architectural Center at the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh, but it was only visible behind glass. No one could walk through the exhibit. From 2004 to 2010, it was stored in a warehouse in Maryland or New Jersey. Then, James Sandoro of Buffalo purchased the office, intending to reassemble it in his own Buffalo Transportation Pierce Arrow Museum. During that time, Sandoro also purchased the plans for a gas station Wright had designed in 1927. 
It had never been constructed, but Sandoro built it as an exhibit that opened in 2014 in his Buffalo Museum. Sandoro persuaded Tom Hagen, patron of the Hagen History Center, to purchase the Wright office to place a notable Frank Lloyd Wright destination in Erie, a central point between Buffalo and southwestern Pennsylvania. Planning and reconstruction for the office at the Hagen History Center began in 2016, but the office had been packed away for nearly 30 years in 27 separate crates. In recreating Frank Lloyd Wright's private office space, Novi and Kidder became friends. Kidder, along with Kidder and Jeffrey's construction, reassembled the puzzle with great attention to detail. As visitors first enter the space, they will feel they have just walked into this second floor office. The windows here recreate the view as seen from the office in San Francisco. After admiring the view, visitors will note the Cherokee red tiles. Green's first wife, Jean Habergreen, was a doctor. Wright asked her family members to design the red ceramic squares that were prominent signature tiles that Wright used on all his projects. The design hints to spaces beyond, but doesn't give immediate access. After entering the glass door, visitors could sit on Wright design stools and speak to the receptionist who could see into the drafting room, though visitors could not. The receptionist sat in the far side of the room next to the window, with filing cabinets behind the reception desk. Wright's classic designs are visible throughout the space. Walls rise only part way up within the space to indicate the presence of areas beyond, and the walls provide screens of vertical louvers with translucent glass in between. Wider 120-degree angles extend spaces past conventional 90-degree angles and allow smaller rooms to seem more spacious. Inside the drafting room, multiple drafting tables allow a small team of architects to work on drawings or other architectural documents. Generous shelf space creates room for books, stocked here with titles that may have been in use in the office's life throughout the 1980s. The building plans on the drafting tables are reproduced from Wright's original drawings for the Fawcett House, built just south of San Francisco. Animal skins in the office are meant to duplicate the spirit of the desert in Taliesin West. As in many of Wright's larger works, ceiling heights vary to give a changing sense of public and private space. The entry and the drafting room are of full ceiling height, while Wright's office is enclosed with a wood and glass canopy. Novi explained that a green panel from the Della Walker House in California was on display as well. During the 50s, after the war, getting impossible to get copper, which was the m material of choice that Wright had selected for the house. Because of that, they had to go on a search for a different material that would be an equal to, or maybe even better material. And what was selected was a porcelain covered steel fascia in lieu of the copper fascia. And Wright said, let's use it. And if it costs less money, it's even better. And the color was exactly the patina that he'd hoped for. Inside Wright's office, the room has an intentional, intimate feel conveying a sense of warmth and privacy. Wright was described as five foot eight inches. This intimate office put him at a small desk close to the wall with just enough room for few visitors. The items on the desk are all original to Wright's and Green's time in San Francisco. There's a snail that has always been here and that would, that would have been during the time of the office. There's a vase there that Aaron made. My most favorite thing about the office, the separate inter inner sanctum of the office. I think it's the most special place here. It's the, it's the private place that Mr. Wright or Aaron would bring their clients. It's the most beautiful part of the office. Green's wife was a doctor. She was very creative in her weavings and Mr. Wright was allowed to pick the, the threads. That was done to integrate closure at the office itself for a little bit more quiet and a little bit more privacy. And it's hard to believe that it's uh, about 70 years old.
part of the organic nature of the office. Japanese art that, uh, that Mr. Wright had uh, selected with Aaron and the, the stools and chairs are all from the good old days. There, there was a gift of a beautiful music box, which we, we have placed on the shelf in the office. She was a dancer. One of Wright's most ambitious projects is also on display in the museum. Wright's model of the Butterfly Bridge was designed to connect San Francisco and Oakland across the bay. Although it was never completed, it influenced the construction of later low-rise concrete bridges, and the model was featured in the movie Die Hard. Important things I was hoping that would happen was that the Butterfly Bridge model would come back to be part of the office once again. The donor of the office took it upon himself to get out there and, and find that bridge. I told him where he could probably go and, and see if he could recover the model and bring it back to the office so that people coming to the office would get a chance to see one of the most fabulous projects that, that's ever been designed. And by gosh, he did it. And anyone coming to, to visit the office will get a chance to see a model that's been hiding away from everyone for the last 35 or 40 years. Wright was also a collector of vehicles and the museum honors that tradition. Wright's 1930 Cord is on loan from the Auburn, Indiana Cord Duesenberg Automobile Museum and the vehicle will be on display in the Hagen History Center until March of 2022. A Crosley Hotshot, another of Wright's favorite vehicles, remains in the museum. Wright had numerous hotshots. This one did not belong to Wright, but it is one of the models he owned. And finally, finally, after all of these many, many years, I've come back, it took coming back to Erie, Pennsylvania to find the, per the perfect owner and the perfect spot and the perfect person to take on the job to rebuild this office. After I've, I've, spent, I've spent many hours here uh, today going through every little detail and, and, and every aspect of the office and it's, it's absolutely perfect. It's, it's just the way it was when, when, when Aaron was here, when Mr. Wright was here. It's been a pleasure to show you our newest exhibit here at the Hagen History Center. This permanent Wright exhibit is open year-round, Tuesdays through Sundays. Please come join us.